So last season, Justin Jefferson misses out on winning NFL Rookie of the Year honors. We have already discussed so far this offseason Kirk Cousins and his potential to be an NFL MVP candidate during the 2021 regular season. The most important piece of hardware that we're all after is, of course, the Lombardi Trophy, but today we will focus on another individual award, and that is going to be the AP Comeback Player of the Year Award, and whether or not Daniel Hunter has the potential to walk away with this award at the end of the season. So, AP Comeback Player of the Year Award, I don't really think I need to explain this award uh, for people who are watching football videos on the internet, but just in case you are unfamiliar, we will go ahead and explain it briefly. Uh, this is an award that is generally reserved for players who missed the previous season with either an injury that was significant enough to knock them out of the entire year, or they just missed a significant portion of it. It is also reserved sometimes for players who just have a bad season statistically and performatively on the field compared to the rest of their career. And then one of these players will light it up in 2021, and they will be named Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, so the premise for this video comes from CBSSports.com and one author, Cody Benjamin, who lists his top 10 players set to rebound in 2021. And uh, before I even clicked on the article, I got to thinking, I was like, hmm, there's got to be at least one Minnesota Vikings player that could potentially be on this list. And then immediately, Daniel Hunter came to mind. So uh, he is on this top 10 list. So we'll go ahead and uh, review the list, talk about where he is on it, and then go ahead and discuss what he can do to win this award and whether or not the deck is stacked against him, which, spoiler alert, it kind of is. So, uh, this is the list according to Cody Benjamin of CBSSports.com. Tap 10 players set to rebound in 2021. Emphasis on his list and not mine because when I make lists, uh, people don't like it all that much. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. Uh, coming in at number 10 for him is Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, number 9 is Dak Prescott. Number 8, Saquon Barkley. Number 7, Joe Mixon. Number 6, Carson Wentz. Number 5, Nick Bosa. Number 4, Christian McCaffrey. Number 3, Julio Jones. Number two is Daniil Hunter, which was a lot higher than I thought I would see him when I clicked on this article. I expected him to at least be, I don't know, maybe in the six to eight range, but uh, he really likes him. He's, so he's got him at number two. And then number one is Odell Beckham. I don't necessarily agree with that choice as the number one player to rebound in 2021 because I don't know how much he really means to that Cleveland Browns offense, and I don't really know how much he contributed to that Cleveland Browns offense prior to his injury last year where he was lost for the season. If anything, I think Browns fans, at least from what I gather, talked to, about Odell Beckham as kind of being a hindrance. Uh, but uh, who knows? Kevin Stefanski, I think we all agree, is the real deal. They've got a very good team. It's definitely a playoff contender. Baker Mayfield has been getting a little bit better every year. So yeah, he's got the skill set Odell Beckham Jr. does to definitely pull this award off. But I would probably... Uh, rank him a little bit lower if I were doing a top 10. I would probably rank Saquon, Dak Prescott, uh, definitely Christian McCaffrey higher than him, but to each their own. So if you noticed anything about that top 10 list, other than Daniil Hunter being the number two player that he chose, you're going to notice that there's a lot of offensive player names on this list. There's only two defensive player names, and those are being Nick Bosa and Daniil Hunter of the Minnesota Vikings. And that's not by accident, because while this isn't exclusively an award for offensive players, it tends to go to them more often than not. As a matter of fact, to uh, even uh, look at the last defensive player to win the award, you got to go all the way back to 2015 with Eric Berry of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, for Daniil Hunter being an edge rusher or defensive end, whatever you like, uh, the last defensive end to win the award was all the way back in 2007 with Greg Ellis of the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't even remember that season. <laughs> uh, some of the previous winners you probably know well, like Tom Brady, uh, Andrew Luck, Michael Vick. I'm naming a lot of quarterbacks. Jordy Nelson was a recipient of this one year. Uh, Chad Pennington is the only player to have won it twice, which was some interesting trivia that I uh, learned today when I was uh, doing research for this video. And the first recipient was a kicker all the way back in the 1960s. So it's not exclusively for offensive players. Uh, it's been awarded to special teams and it has been awarded to defense. But the problem is, and you can just see it on this top 10 list that has been provided by CBSSports.com, is that there are some very good offensive players that are going to be up for this award this year if their uh, season you know pans out. So my odds on favorite, or if I were to make a bet, it would probably be on Christian McCaffrey, given how dynamic he is and how much he means to that Carolina Panthers offense. The only problem or hesitation I have is the Sam Darnold situation. Uh, same thing with Sanquan Barkley. Um, you know, I really wouldn't put too much 
into like Carson Wentz, Joe Mixon, or some of these other guys. Julio Jones is one of those interesting candidates because he goes from one team to another, right? He's more of a change of scenery type of guy for this award where he goes, has a poor statistical year in Atlanta last year. And I know it all too well because he was on my fantasy team, which just drove me up the wall. And now he finds himself in a new environment with uh, AJ Brown, Derrick Henry, and a very different uh, Tennessee Titans roster compared to the Atlanta Falcons. So um, that is the biggest hurdle for Daniel Hunter to win this award is to outshine all of the offensive players. And that's going to be difficult to do because that's where all the attention goes anyway, right? As we said, it's not an offensive exclusive award, but everybody's going to be focused on the running backs, the quarterbacks, the wide receivers. It's very hard to break into that limelight. I mean, you even talk about all some of the other awards uh, in sports uh, in, in football, like the NFL MVP award. And I'm not really off the top of my head able to remember the last serious discussion we had about a defensive player winning that. For the Heisman Trophy in college football, you got to go all the way back to, I believe, Charles Woodson was the last and maybe only defensive player to win that award. I don't know about only, but I think he was the last. So the DAC is stacked against Daniel Hunter in that sense is that he has to come over all of the attention that goes to the offensive players. What does he have working in his favor? Well, a number of things. Number one is the defense that he's coming back to this year is miles better already on paper than the defense that he would have played on last year had he not missed 2020 with the neck injury. So he comes back with one of his old teammates, Sheldon Richardson has returned. Uh, he will get to play with Michael Pierce this year who opted out last season. Uh, they bring in Dalvin Tomlinson. We have a rotational situation going on on the opposite of Daniel Hunter at the other defensive end position with Stephen Weatherly, who is back after a year with the Carolina Panthers. Or was he gone two years? I forget. Also, we have DJ Wanham. We have a couple of rookies. So the defensive line looks much better uh, than it did last year by a mile. We've also got some significant upgrades in the secondary uh, with Patrick Peterson, Bashad Breeland, uh, Mackenzie Alexander is back. Hopefully that creates more coverage sacks, more coverage opportunities for Tadeo Hunter to get to the quarterback. Um, what else does he got working in his favor? Well, he's only 26 years old and he's already an elite pass rusher. So if there's anybody who is an athletic freak enough to overcome something as serious as a neck injury, and it is serious. Remember, we've been talking about Daniel Hunter, the neck injury for months, uh, ever since the beginning of last season, uh, when it all started out as a tiny little tweak, according to Mike Zimmer. Uh, so if there's anybody, any physical specimen uh, that you could bet on to come back from this injury and perform again at an elite level, I think your money is pretty well placed on Daniel Hunter. And this isn't something that we haven't seen before, right, in Minnesota, because we've had Adrian Peterson go down with serious injuries that probably would have knocked most other uh, most other running backs into early retirement. But no, this dude comes back from his injuries and he's like, I'm going to chase a friggin' MVP award. So um, we're used to this uh, and this something this could be something that we see repeat. So that is what Daniel Hunter has going for him, a revamped uh, defense, the fact that he is an athletic machine and he is an elite pass rusher. The sack total is what could jettison him uh, to win AP Comeback Player of the Year award when all is said and done. If he can go back, uh, you know, regather all of the, um, the the great performances that he had in seasons prior, I believe what back-to-back -back seasons with 14 and a half sacks, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but I just know it was something uh, in that ballpark. So um, what would it take? I don't know, maybe an 18 sack season. Maybe he gets a 20 sack, uh, 20 sack season that seals the deal, but it is going to be hard to compete with all of the offensive players that are candidates this season. So let me know what you think in the comments below about the potential of Daniel Hunter to win AP comeback player of the year award and who you would be, uh, who you would pick as your odds on favorite if it wasn't him. So thank you very much for watching. That's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one.